In recent days, a number of members of Congress have demanded that Mohammed bin Salman be held accountable, either by way of tweets or in the case of Senator Bob Corker during a debate about Yemen in the Senate. I've asked for a high-level briefing with Mattis, Pompeo and Gina Haspel to come in as soon as we get back to share with us what is happening uh, with Saudi Arabia on both fronts, both Yemen and what is happening uh, as it relates to the journalist who was assassinated, in my opinion, at the direction of the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Now the Washington Post reports the CIA has concluded that the Saudi Crown Prince ordered the assassination of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. This, it says, according to people familiar with the matter, who spoke on the condition of anonymity. The report says, in reaching its conclusions, the CIA examined multiple sources of intelligence, including a phone call that the Crown Prince's brother, an ambassador to the U.S., had with the journalist before his murder. Khalid bin Salman was quick to deny the allegation, saying on Twitter, I never talked to him by phone and certainly never suggested he go to Turkey for any reason. I asked the U.S. government to release any information regarding this claim. Within hours, several other news organizations, including the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, were also quoting anonymous officials confirming the report of the CIA's finding. Although it is very important, it's very significant uh, that uh, what the Washington Post, the New York Times, uh, uh, CNBC and, and other outlets over the past uh, three hours uh, have reported that the CIA uh, internal assessment now uh, is pointing its fingers uh, at Mohammed uh, bin Salman as having ordered uh, this operation. This has never happened before. The CIA will probably will not comment on this kind of uh, uh, report. However, uh, the Washington Post uh, wouldn't report uh, this unless they were accurately reporting what the CIA they believe the CIA said. So, which is a slight nuance. Now, one can anticipate that the congressional oversight committees will um, have been briefed or demand to be briefed on this. The reports alleging Mohammed bin Salman's involvement are likely to fuel even further congressional demands that punitive measures be taken against the Crown Prince and his government. The question is whether the president has been briefed by the CIA on its reported conclusions, and if so, whether he would be prepared to back away from his stated reluctance to take action against the Saudi government and its leaders. Mike Hanna, Al Jazeera, Washington. Live now to Istanbul and our correspondent, Andrew Simmons. So, Andrew, is it fair to say this is, I guess, the biggest, most substantial claim so far that we've seen since September the 28th into October the 2nd? It certainly is, Peter. Yes, it uh, will cause shockwaves right across the board. It certainly puts to bed uh, the argument over whether or not the Saudi Arabian account of events uh, really is true. Uh, Turkey has been insisting all along that the account that the Saudis have tried to project, it's been a very, very confusing one because it's changed at least four to five times. But it is falsified, according to the Turkish investigation team. Uh, it is really an attempt at trying to cover up the real circumstances, the fact that it was ordered from on high, not just from on high as the term is used, but it was ordered by Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince himself. Now, the CIA has assembled a whole range of evidence, it would seem, not just Khaled bin Salman, the uh, Saudi ambassador to Washington, uh, having a phone conversation or a, a text exchange, certainly a phone conversation is what it seems to have been, uh, with uh, Jamal Khashoggi, ahead of him going uh, to the consulate here, assuring him of safety. This is something that as you heard in Mike Hanna's report, has been firmly denied by the U.S. ambassador. Uh, but this, it would seem, is a wiretap. This is a direct allegation, and bin Salman is directly connected, obviously, to his older brother, Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince. He has supported uh, his elder brother in all of his 
efforts to convince the United States that he was an honest broker, that he was reforming uh, the whole uh, range of politics in Saudi Arabia, the economy as well, and he was forging forward with a new type of political arrangement with the United States in cooperation over Iran, in cooperation with Israel, a whole range of foreign policy issues uh, with Donald Trump. So now we have a situation we're seeing vividly now the Washington Post going out with this report, uh, unusually phrased, people familiar with the matter are the sources. It's bold journalism. It's been followed up by a number of other major media houses, and the pressure is on the White House now to call its shots in this situation because it stands accused by many in Congress uh, and many in Turkey, many in Europe as well. The White House stands accused of being very slow to make its mind up on a course of action, announcing through the Treasury uh, these uh, sanctions, 17 uh, members of the Saudi establishment, you might call the security establishment, but they're key figures within the plot. They're not anyone who ordered the plot as such. So this is seen as a very weak measure by Congress. Congress is calling for something much firmer. And, of course, the CIA has not formally briefed Congress yet, as it's expected to do uh, certainly soon, it okay. would seem. Andrew, does it also mean something else? Does it mean that when Gina Haspel returned to Washington and briefed Donald Trump, we understand, inside the White House, because she had a seven-hour sit-down with her Turkish opposite numbers, as well as giving him her interpretation of what she thought she'd been hearing, she actually had heard that tape, which makes up the list of hard data that the CIA is now talking about in the past 12 hours or so out of their building, their, their Washington headquarters. It's a very fair question, Peter. October the 23rd was when Gina Haspel uh, flew to Ankara, uh, and she was... Uh, she did listen to the tape, reportedly. We, we're pretty sure of that. Whether it was actually there and then, I think that's the case, but we don't have formal confirmation of that, but we'd be very surprised if it was anything else. October the 23rd was when she was in Ankara. She had the full briefing. She returned, and as you say, she briefed, uh, she briefed the president. Now, whether or not all of this data was assembled already, because it was three weeks after the murder, remember, before she actually came out to Turkey, and that was back in October the 23rd. Since then, there has been an amazing amount of work done by the CAA, according to all sources we've spoken to, and that has led to the point where it's an assembly of data, it's an assembly of some of it circumstantial evidence, some of it pointing in a certain direction. Whether that there is a smoking gun there, is a key question, and one that might be very relevant in the coming hours, the coming days, perhaps the coming weeks. But the bottom line is Congress wants to hear a full report from the CIA. It has the power of subpoenaing um, uh, Gina herself, uh, if need be, to, give, to testify before it. Uh, she can say no on the grounds of national security. Uh, but the bottom line is there is now a situation whereby all eyes are on Donald Trump as to what he intends to do, because what he's done so far will not really tame the beast that is now taking a charge towards Riyadh. Andrew, thanks very much. Sinem Kusulu joins us from Ankara. Sinem, what do we think Mr Erdogan or the political establishment in Turkey will do now with this information from the CIA? Well, Peter, uh, the Turks uh, actually are very happy that uh, what CIA reported is in line with what uh, Turkish security sources have been uh, reporting uh, since the beginning of this incident in October, uh, since t uh, October uh, the 2nd. Uh, but of course, uh, there are repercussions. Uh, there are some uh, rumors about what the uh, bargains should be or can be on the table between United States and Turkey. Because it tur on one side, Turkey says that we are the defender of J Jamal Khashoggi case because uh, it happened in our country. The Saudis violated the Vienna Convention. It's a diplomatic crisis. But also Turks are trying to uh, avoid that it becomes a bilateral uh, matter. Uh, that's why they are trying to internationalize it. 
Of course, the United States' uh, attitude and reactions towards uh, the Saudi is very important for Turkey because uh, people are also discussing whether Turks and uh, President Erdogan and Donald Trump are uh, negotiating over uh, uh, covering up Jamal Khashoggi case uh, in return of uh, Gulen's extradition, uh, Fethullah Gulen, who has been accused of uh, being the perpetrator, organizer uh, of the failed coup attempt in uh, July 2016. But we have been hearing from the senior Turkish officials that they are saying at no point that Turkey uh, offered to hold back on Khashoggi case uh, investigation in return for Gulen's extradition because they say we believe that these two cases are not connected in any way, shape or form. Uh, so uh, Gulen's extradition uh, is excluded. Uh, there are some other uh, points that are being discussed. Uh, for instance, uh, United States support to PYD and SDF, Syrian Democratic Forces. Turkey sees the SDF and uh, uh, the PYD and YPG as the Syrian branch of the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, which Turkey says it's a terrorist organization. But uh, despite United States and EU also list PKK as a terrorist organization, they say YPG is different. And in during our fight against Daesh in Syria and in order to provide stability and security in Syria, we need SDF and YPG support. But Turkey still says you are contributing, you are assisting uh, the PKK in our eyes. So this is one other negotiation and probably Turks are trying to get a leverage uh, through uh, Khashoggi case while bargaining uh, over uh, SDF as well. Also, there are some bilateral uh, defense agreements, Peter, including a joint project of F-35 fighter jets and there was a problem in the delivery of uh, F-35 uh, and Turkey is trying to Turkey believes that US decision to delay the delivery was political so uh, through Khashoggi case Turkey is also trying to put leverage over uh, Washington DC. Sinem thanks very much.